What's going on, Simple Men's Comics family? Of course, you know, we here at the channel are all about amplifying your collection through integrity and community. And now that community extends to your mobile phone. Be sure to text 803-200-2720 to be included in that brand new Bolo Nation text community. Now today I sent out a text letting everybody know about Pulse 11 and Pulse 13 and their importance to Danielle Cage who is red hot on the back issue market. And if you were subscribed, you would have found out already. So be sure to subscribe, 803-200-2720. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics where we are amplifying your comic book collection through integrity and community. This is three up, three down. We're gonna give you three hot and three cold market trends hitting the comic community. But before we get into it, it's important to let you guys know that this video is brought to you by CBSI Swag. Head up cbsiswag.com. They right now have this awesome Joker shirt which we have on the screen. We're taking pre-orders for that. Those pre-orders do end December 2nd and you can save 10% using code word three up, three down. Code words on the screen. It'll also be in the description of this video. But Jack, what do you think of the shirt? Love the shirt. My man Emiliano from cbsiswag.com is an amazing designer and these guys came with the perfect design for the time right now. Everything Joker is hot. So you know for Christmas time, you need that CBSI swag exclusive Joker t-shirt. Right. Again, those pre-orders are only available until December 2nd. Make sure you get your orders in. Talking about Joker, we're moving right into the three-up portion of the show. And we're going to start off with DC Black Label. I've been loving these Black Label. I'll have, i I got to admit... At first, I wasn't a big fan of that prestige format, but the fact that they keep putting them out in prestige makes it easier to buy and spend that money on the storage for them rather than buying storage for just one book. I don't mind doing it if they're all going to come out like that. I think it still is an off-putting thing for some buyers, but the stories are fantastic, and I know that's probably why you have it on this list, Jack. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what the thing about it is for me with the prestige format is the amazing artwork that's going along with a lot of these DC Black Label releases, it needs to be in that prestige format. You need to see that big and bold. Um, they look great when you're sitting there reading them. But this is definitely a reader buzz pick. Every single one of these DC Black Label releases seems to garner just a tremendous amount of reader buzz in the market. Not only that, in the secondary market, it seems like they're showing some real short-term gains. Now, you may be sitting there going, but Jack, what? What Black Label book has been a, a solid long-term pick? Well, financially so far, none per se. What we're seeing is in the short term, these books are selling out at retail. They're selling by the weekend of their release, most of them well over cover price, most of them two times cover. But within the next week or so, as people get their online orders in, as stores get their restocks from Diamond, then we start to see these prices come back down to earth and back to cover price, but it doesn't matter. That's not what we're all about here at Simple Men's Comics. We're trying to give you an overview of the market. And one of the major, most important components of the market is retailer sales and retailers are moving a ton of these black label books and the joy and popularity of reading comics. And these books are incredibly popular with readers. So they're absolutely hot. They're absolutely trending upward. And it's only a matter of time before one of these books really pops next level the way Batman Damn did. Right, it's important to know also they're hot, and usually the MSRP on these are a little bit higher, so be, being able to sell like that, and also a while back we mentioned on here about Virgo going away, and I kind of mentioned how I saw DC Black Label a perfect imprint for some of those stories to migrate to, and I think we're kind of seeing that with some of those darker DC stories. I think it's only a matter of time where we start seeing some of those titles from Vertigo on Black Label as well. Yeah, and it looks like we're starting to see that now with Hellblazer. The next trend we're seeing move in the market right now is Amadeus Cho. You might know him as Totally Awesome Hulk, but we also recently mentioned him on this channel as Braun. That's right. We talked about Champions 22 with last week's back issue bolo show, Modern Marvels. If you haven't checked out that video, be sure to check that out. It's in the, on the channel. It's on the playlist. And that one right there is a book that we've seen, honestly, some movement just in the last week since we've talked about it. Maybe because we've talked about it, but it's definitely moving. 
But that's not the book that's really been trending upward. The major trend has been Totally Awesome Hulk number one. That book in cover A is now above a $10 book. We're seeing variants spike with the two 1 and 25 variants, one going for about 25 and that Hulk number one, Incredible Hulk number one homage going for about $60. And I think that those books are starting to dry up and we may continue to see prices raise with those. Also, volume two of Amazing Fantasy 15, which is the first appearance of Amadeus, that book is also on the rise. And that book has always been in demand, but it's had some kind of ebbs and flows, and it's definitely on the upswing right now. Right, and still that um, number 22 is a good seller as well, right? Absolutely, yeah. Still still hot, still moving upward. And the final one we're going to talk about for the upward movement and market trends this week, we see Iron Fist might be showing up in that Shang-Chi movie, huh? Right, and now it's important to know that this is a lot of rumor and speculation at this point. But there's been a lot of talk about a blood sport tournament and that this type of style of film could introduce us to characters such as Iron Fist. And just that talk alone has moved Iron Fist keys up on the secondary market. We're seeing Marvel Premiere 15 hitting some serious demand. It's making top lists. And because of that, some it's had kind of a trickle-down effect of some other books. We're also seeing Iron Fist number one, which is still, in my opinion, a undervalued key oh, silver Start, serpent yeah starting to move up um we're, and again it then it's you have to start going kind of like back in time to when the netflix show was about to premiere and say like okay well what keys were we all chasing back then i think that some of that is going to happen again right i think that's also going to bring some heat to that what that special marvel edition number 15 that had that that shang chi the first shang chi right because anything that yes. brings heat to Shang Chi, probably gonna see the market move on that. And then, of course, there was that what Delhi Hands of Kung Fu that had like the first cover appearance of both of them on it. Either way, all those are books to be on the lookout. But definitely, Marvel premiere we're seeing move again. And like you said, Iron Fist number one. So those are the upper movers, and we're gonna get into the three down right now. Starting with lenticular covers. Some of these were hot at one point, especially some of those DC covers. But they tried to go back to the well again, and it didn't go as well. Marvel even tried to do so too. But tell us more about it, Jack. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of these covers just in the concept of them. I think they're cool. They look cool. But they have had little to no value on the secondary market. Now, you mentioned those original Villain Month covers and how they did well. And I think like a lot of trends in comic books, you can hit a home run once, but it's very hard to go back to that same well again. Uh, Marvel Legacy, when they were doing those Legacy covers, they went and did those homages, all lenticular. Those haven't done well. The two books to look at, in my opinion, that is case study. One is a Marvel book, one is a DC book. And, you know, the first really is Thanos 13, which is obviously a big major key issue with the first appearance of Cosmic Ghost Rider. In that book, of all the various covers that have been released, including later printings, one of, if not the most least demand is seen for that lenticular cover first print. Now you compare it to a DC cover, like Doomsday Clock number one, a book that's been in pretty solid demand of late, that lenticular cover is by far in the least amount of demand of any of the covers of that book. And I think that that really shows you something, that like these books are just not resonating with secondary market collectors. But moving right on into the next downward pick this week, we're going to talk about Justice League Dark. This was another one a couple years ago was super hot, especially when Guillermo del Toro right, was going to be directing this movie and everyone was talking about it new 52 was a big run that people were hunting after but there's other books that people are hunting and all these right now just aren't hot yeah and you know brian th this is one of the properties that you and i really agree on right we both have an affinity for justice league dark um and i think that there's gonna come a day where justice league dark is gonna be hot again which is one of the value of these kind of like up and down trend lists is you know we've talked about this with the hot and cold show that uh, downward trend is buying opportunities. So if you look at Swamp Thing 49, 50, or that Swamp Thing Annual 2, which is all argued about what is the first appearance, you're probably looking at Cameo versus First Full of Justice League Dark. All of those books at one time or another have had major demand. They're all on the downswing. All can be had for less than about $15 on the high end. And when we were in Baltimore, I saw many of these books in $5 bins. Another thing is you mentioned the New 52, and that's when Justice League Dark really started heating up. And they got their first solo series. 
that number one issue at one point was as much as a $20 issue. It's now cover price issue. The second print, which is almost a ghost, is also sitting for about cover price and readily available. It was more of a ghost at one time. Now it's, it's, it's an easy find. Also, that Justice League Dark number nine from that New 52 run, that was when Constantine started leading the team. You got kind of a new team. And that book was in major demand because it was thought of as, well, this is probably going to be more like the Justice League Dark that we're going to see whenever we see an adaptation on film. And that book is now cover price or less. And I, the one real outlier in this whole thing, Brian, is Dead Man with the fact that we have that Strange Adventures uh, anthology TV series coming to HBO Max. Dead Man's first appearance has been red hot over the last week. Having said that, all of his solo series aren't moving at all. Yeah, even that like Neil Adams variant or that Neil Adams glow in the dark cover that they put out not too long ago. I still have Strange Adventures 205 as a saved search on my eBay list. But I'd never find one worth pulling the trigger on. But that, and then, of course, there's a, some of those Zatana, uh, Zatana books that people are always on the hunt for. Yeah. So there's outliers there. But as a whole, Justice League Dark is pretty cold right now. Yes, absolutely, Brian. But it's something at this point that I am looking towards buying in the near future. Right. And then the last one we're talking about that's on the downward spiral, which this one really breaks my heart because I'm a big fan of. But Daredevil is on the cold right now. I'm still a huge fan of the current run, that Chip Zdarsky run. I'm telling you, if you're a reader, hot, cold, regardless, read that Chip Zdarsky. It's one of the best ones, I think, since maybe that Frank Miller or Mark Wade did a great Daredevil run. But this Chip Zdarsky one, I highly recommend. If you haven't read it, pick it up and trade. Yeah, you and I have had a lot of discussions about Daredevil within the last year as you've really championed that Chip Zdarsky run. And I've mentioned that that Frank Miller run is one of my favorite comic runs absolutely of all time. I have a short box filled with that Frank Miller era Daredevil and especially those keys, those first appearances like Daredevil 174, the first appearance of the hand. I have multiple copies of kind of every Daredevil key from that era you could imagine. But it's really funny the way that Daredevil has trended. Let's be honest, those Netflix shows were a big disappointment for speculators, for collectors. They just didn't hold the type of value that we all anticipated. And since then, while we're waiting for these characters transition into the MCU, everything's kind of been cold and on, the, on a downward trend. I could put Luke Cage on this list. We could talk about Jessica Jones. It really wouldn't matter. The one outlier is the fact that the least popular character in those Netflix series is Iron Fist now has a solid rumor that he, of some direction that he's headed towards. And we've seen that spike. I think it's only a matter of time before the same thing happens with Daredevil. I like Daredevil as far as like, like I mentioned that 174 for first appearance of the hand. I like some of those kind of like important crossover keys that he had, like 183 with Punisher. I like, obviously, first appearance of Elektra. I think that these are all issues that could, again, see their time if we get a proper Kevin Feige done, kind of whether it's series or movie. A lot of people might laugh, but one of my favorite Daredevil runs is Kevin Smith. I I, I would not laugh that Kevin Smith number one with that gorgeous Casada cover yeah. was one of my ch childhood grails. So there it is, guys. Three up, three down. Do us a favor, click that thumbs up. Also, go ahead and let us know in the comments, what is your three up and three down? Put them in there. You never know. We might feature them on the next episode. So that's been three up and three down. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you click that notification bell so you can be notified the next time we bring another video from this brand new series to the channel, tracking those hot and cold trends in the secondary market.